Hey guys, welcome to this week's episode. This week we're going to be talking about what social media and what generally people tell you that you should be buying for your musician setup. This is going to touch on the creative side of it, but mostly I'm going to be talking about what I know, which is going to be the musician side of it. So let's get into this week's video. So usually what the industry is trying to sell you is a bunch of this gear that in reality you don't need. And I kind of touched on this in my last video that in reality, all you need as a musician, as a producer rather, is a computer and a digital audio workstation, which if you guys have watched the last video, you would have known. I didn't know what that was entirely, at least I know digital and, uh, and workstation, but anyway. So I'm gonna go over a few things that I think that people should know about what they should buy, what they should get, what they should be investing their money to in first as a musician slash producer. So we'll get right into it guys. So as I said in the last video, uh, a laptop, a desktop, and some type of digital audio workstation works best for this. And in reality, people are gonna tell you you need this or that, but it's just preference. I personally use a 2012 MacBook Pro that was gifted to me by my best friend and uh, it's worked just fine. I mean, it's showing its age a little bit with uh, too many instances of serum. Those of you who use serum, are gonna know how taxing it is on your computer. So I'm looking to upgrade pretty quick here, but as far as doing its job, I can edit some mild videos on it and I can also uh, produce music on it and it's getting the job done so far. So besides that, I would say, uh, again, your DAW, which would be, in my case, I use Ableton, but there's Logic, there's FL Studio, Pro Tools, uh, Studio One, all amazing programs. Um, most of it is just personal preference and how your workflow works. For me, I tried FL first, I didn't really like it that much, and then I switched over to Ableton uh, because I like the live, live performance aspect of it, which is something I plan on integrating into my performances in the months to come. After that, after you got that set up and you're looking to add a couple more things to your setup, I would suggest strongly getting some really good quality uh, over-ear or in-ear IEMs. IEMs, I don't know, I don't know what that stands for. I'll put it on the screen here, or here, somewhere on here. And that's just to help you with listening to your track and trying to get as trying to get a really flat signal. And what I mean by flat signal, so a lot of headphones that you buy nowadays have curves in um, the low end that boost it. So when you're actually listening to your mix, it's already pre-boosted in the headphones. And that's not something that you want because when you're correcting in your headphones, you're going to be adjusting your bass to a, to headphones that don't really work with it, if, if that makes any sense. Uh, you're going to be boosting the bass too much. You're going to be boosting the bass not enough. And if you get something that's flat, so uh, and you can use these on most IEMs or most over your headphones, at least uh, the higher quality ones will offer you a a chart map and you're just looking for something that is, is as flat as possible from the transparent sound essentially. So next on the list is the, uh, like I said, headphones, IMs. I have a, a pair of uh, New Force um, DC3s. So they're uh, triple, uh, one for top, mid and lows. Those work great. And I got those off of Mastrop. And again, Mastrop's amazing. I'll actually link uh, those down below if you guys wanna pick some up as well as my over-ear headphones. I use open back for the studio because it's nice and sound treated and I can get some really, really good uh, audio with them. And I'll show you guys on the screen right now. Uh, these are them. As you can see, they are huge on my head. But um, the reason I like the open back is because it gives you the ability to listen to your music uh, as if you're in a in a room itself without having to use your monitors, right? So if you live in an apartment with some friends or if you live um, anywhere with other people, essentially, uh, you're going to probably want to invest in really good quality headphones before actually going out and buying yourself some really, really good quality studio monitors because there's no point of spending a lot of money on big studio monitors when you're not going to be able to use them, right? So there's that. After that, everything else is just kind of extra, right? Um, microphones would be great. Um, you can find a lot of really good cheap ones. I got a uh, MIDI controller right here. Uh, in past videos, I've showed you guys again, this is the Innovation Launch Key Mini. This one's great. Uh, it's great for traveling and it gets the job done. Um, besides that, yeah, not, not much more than that, guys. It's like I personally had to slow myself down because I kept on thinking, at least this is how I used to think in the past, that better quality gear. I know this is dumb, so don't roast me 
don't worry with me about it, sorry, little burp. Uh, I used to think that if you buy really good quality products or really, really good quality stuff that it was gonna affect your your mix or like it was just gonna instantly make your mix or your sound better, which is, I know, dumb to think about that, but it's it's how I thought. And so I, spent, I ended up spending a lot of money on a bunch of different stuff that at the time I really didn't need and that I could probably have invested better in plugins or uh, invested earlier into a computer because for a while I was doing it, uh, all my production on a MacBook Air which uh, wasn't ideal because it was overheating all the time. But uh, either way, that still, that still got the job done. So the biggest thing is that companies are gonna try to push you to buy uh, crazy monitors, like this is what you need to start producing. But really, really at the end of the day, all you need to start is your computer, your digital audio workstation, and preferably some headphones. And if you don't have the best headphones, honestly, anything that's gonna that you, you can plug into your computer and put in your ears so that you can try to listen to those music is gonna be good. I'm just trying to recommend the um, the, the best that you could probably get. I would, I would say invest in really good quality headphones, invest in the DAW that you'd like, and then the computer and everything else uh, past that is fluff. As one of, the, one of my favorite producers of all time, Skrillex, he made his music purely on a laptop for most of his life. And he, he still makes most of his music on the road when he's when he when he used to tour, right? Now he has a crazy good studio, but that comes in that comes in time, right? Because the biggest thing is with when you have big uh, monitors, you want to be able to listen to them, right? But if you live with other people or if you live in a, a sound delicate environment, you're not going to really be able to do that, right? So, yeah, guys, that's my recommendations for uh, studio gear. You really don't need to spend that much money in order to get into it, and it's super duper rewarding if you really like to produce music. Uh, I would strongly suggest anyone give it a try if, you f if you're feeling passionate about it. Uh, let me know. I always love to help. I have a bunch of videos that I used when I first started producing. I would love to sh share it with you guys. Uh, please let me know if you guys need any help. Uh, again, I'd love to help. Um, and I want to help everyone follow their passions as well as it's inspiring for me when I see other people following their passions as well. But guys, that has been it for this week's video. I really appreciate you guys clicking on the video and enjoying it. I just want to give a quick shout out to uh, all the people in the United States that are protesting for the right to not be uh, abused and beat. And my condolences to George Floyd and <sighs> I, I don't know what to say. I'll be uh, going to one of the uh, protests soon enough and my support is with you guys. I, I don't I don't think I'll ever be able to understand, but I stand with you. Again, guys, stay safe out there, and I'll see you guys in the next video.